This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's up guys? So we're working on an ice machine. Let's take a look. The complaint is they have no ice. Machine's running. A little dirty and not horrible, but when I come over here on my temperatures, first thing I noticed is 133 and 127 on my uh, liquid and hot gas. Or maybe it's just liquid, I forget which one. Either way, it should not be that hot. So let's go up on the roof and see what's going on. This is a remote unit, but they have no ice in there. Uh, right in the middle of the drive through hurry here. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I would speculate this here is dining room. Here's the other one. This should be drive. Had a feeling that maybe the fan's not running. Got the controls out here. Uh, well, it looks like oil. That's a bad sign. I don't know why these are kind of half in there. That's great. Okay, that fan's spinning full speed, but because of the frame rate, it looks like it's not. You see we've got what appears to be a leak right there on the high side line. We've got one swivel T after another. That is not how I like doing it. That feels like it's got pressure on it. I'm afraid to take that cap off because they didn't put a straighter core underneath of it. Uh, I think what happened is the strip down. This switch here, they just used it for a high pressure safety only. And it got loop-de-duped up to here. The low pressure switch, which could have replaced that one there. We just didn't use it. And it's just hanging in there by one, one screw. And it allows all the water to fall down into it. So that's nice. You know, I read sometimes people say, are you just complaining? Yeah, there's a reason why I complain. It's because of people that don't do a good job. If they don't care, then it just don't even matter. They'll never care. And then it just never would be done right. But from what it appears, that fan cycle switch wasn't running. So we'll get the, we're gonna go get some big blue, make sure that thing's not leaking. Then we're gonna have to fool around with refrigerant loss. Went ahead and took a chance, ended up undoing that. Straighter core was out a little bit, causing a little bit of a leak. Got the analogs here. Let's see where we're at on this pressure switch. A 205 area, so we're not too horrible. Let's see if we can find what the other one was rated for here. One was a high pressure and one was a uh, actual fan cycle. All right, just pulled the disconnect. Let's see what we got here, if we can maybe see a, yeah, look at that. It's, even with what residual we got there. It's a nice old leaky leaky, huh? Normally we would wrap this in like a split vinyl tubing to prevent it from possibly shaking into stuff. And the bad thing is that fan switch, I mean, I'm assuming it's probably low on charge, obviously, so is the fan switch just it couldn't build up enough pressure so how long did it last you know it's just it's all wholesome goodnesses all right so we grabbed the torches brought them up here i'm not fooling with this generic hodgepodgery here we're going to use a pinch off tool down here where we got plenty of room to reround it we're going to unbraze it here unbraze it here we'll put two new ports in there and we'll screw that on there that way this vibration crap doesn't happen again that's just just an issue, so we're gonna fix that. So we've got it pinched off here. We're gonna go ahead and relieve any pressure in there right here. That one there, not that I had to, but I just wanted to get it out of my way. Yeah, there's your pressure switch. I may have to look in the book to see what it cycled on and off at. I'm, usually it's about 230, 235, I think. I forget. I haven't been doing ice machines that often anymore. I've kind of like gotten away from this stuff and all the small stuff. I've been trying to mainly focus on stuff that not everybody does every day. I'm starting to get a little bit rusty on some of those things. I have a little oil flare up here. Pull the torch away when it gets warm enough. Go. This 
this right back in here like this. Yeah, there's that one. That took forever, didn't it? Just didn't have time for that. That took way too long. I don't know, I ain't got no way to hold it. All right, I got those burned in. Not a big deal. Get this conglomeration off here. So it does have a Schrader core still, but yeah, that, that just needs to go for a hike. This will be able to be used for the gauges still. This needs re-ran. I really don't like this high pressure switch where it's at. We're gonna move it up here. I don't mind doing it here like this, but it wouldn't hurt to go in a little bit further so the rain ain't hitting on it. And two screws, not just one. Okay, so we're running on phone, so I don't have my GoPro. I really didn't think we'd be using it downstairs anyhow. So here's what we got. Went to the frames here, because the frames are gonna be the strongest point, so it's not gonna shake as much. Went to the frames here, that way it's a more, uh, in the frames here, obviously it's stronger. It's gonna be more resilient, not a shake as much, possibly. It just depends on whether that fan blade's balanced or not. I'm debating on whether I tie, wire tie them together or what. Uh, I've seen both mixed reviews. I like the split tube, but I don't honestly feel like going through that. Plus I'm already taking extra time to do it right so that they don't have problems later. Uh, unfortunately, no Schrader core depressors in these. That's unfortunately what we don't stock is ones that actually have it. And I was not gonna put that junk back on just to have it leak again. So I'm gonna put in here, there's no Schrader core. Somebody better have themselves a pinch off tool. If you don't have it, I guess, you know what? It's time to get one. So that's how we got that in there. I would have liked to seen the low pressure cut uh, hooked on there, but I'm not fooling with that right now. Let's uh, go ahead and start uh, getting that re-rounded. So we've got that re-rounded. It's not very hard to do when you actually have a tool that re-rounds it. That's why I don't like the pinch off vice grip style. They work, there's times where they work better in tight spots, but this one here re-rounds it right back to where you need it at. It's perfectly flat on the inside. That is the uh, Imperial 105 FF. I've got links for this stuff down in all my tool sections, just like anything. You can get it on Amazon, same price, but you support me. For making these videos so anyhow uh got the wires wire tied together so that they won't short into some of the metal there let's go ahead i've got that undone there let's go ahead and get this thing running uh you're supposed to pull the charge i don't know how much we really have left understand where this thing kicks on i think it's 235 yeah we're close there okay i didn't get that through my eyeball I guess my question is, was the fan not coming on because it didn't have enough refrigerant, or is there something wrong with the new switch that they just replaced? We do have that mark there. Like I said, that fan is spinning. It's coming back cold. That's what's really crazy. Unfortunately, it might be a matter of having to yank it. That looks really good. Let's raise this a little bit, see if it shuts off. There's the 90 mark. Yeah, there's a headmaster on this, I guess, is the main thing. Why are we having to run the fan cycle so much? So in reality, that headmaster should be doing most of the work. Woo! Yeah, headmaster is bypassing big time. That's, that's supposed to be liquid, and that is not liquid. That is hot. Yeah, we are bypassing right now. Let's see what this thing's running at. 225 head 225 yeah we're low we're quite low we're we're just gonna have to yank the charge as much as i don't want to we're running no fan and all you're doing is just dumping hot gas that's that's not gonna fly the boot the birds are not getting out of the coop we're gonna have to go down there and see what the charge is on this thing so went downstairs holds 200 ounces so we're gonna pull this thing down. Normally I do a three point recovery at the actual unit. What I've done, I just left it run. We're just gonna suck it down. Pressure switch will cut out the compressor. Solenoids are gonna be open because it's gonna think it's gonna run. The machine's not smart enough to know what's really going on. We're just pulling it down that way. Fast and easy, sleazy, get it done. We're just gonna take this down to a couple pounds of pressure. That way we don't have to fool it with filter dryers or vacuum pumps or any of that. We're just gonna get her down to low pressure vapor and then we're just gonna weigh it all back in liquid. 
So while that's pulling down, I heard this thing squawk. It don't seem really super loose, but it's starting to wear the pulley out pretty good. It, uh, I do got it turned off. He's a little bit tighter. It's not, not crazy loose, but I heard a squawk. And they got an actual makeup air unit that has air conditioning on it, which is unusual. Half time they don't have that. Let's see how those filters looked. No short cycle delay on that. You gotta love that. Yeah, they're pretty dirty. Oh well, we don't, they don't take care of everything they've got, so. Don't want to do more than what they want done it's going to do the obvious stuff so i do have an extra cap here that we're not going to use so we're just about there we still got probably 15 20 pounds yet of pressure to go which probably correlates to four or five pounds but we're going to go ahead and get a cap on this suction dryer over here i noticed it came up here which luckily that's cold go ahead and get that on there Trying to get things done while you're recovering. Not a great way to do it. They don't give you really super heat subcooling. So you gotta yank the charge and weigh it back in. Now the company provides me an Appion recovery machine, but this right here is the twin dual by Amphicon. My guys over at Amphicon sent it to me to try it out. And I've been using it for a few months now. And so far I gotta say it's pretty slick as far as speed. I think it's faster than my Appion. It definitely has a bigger fan on the front and rear of it. So when we're recovering 410A, I don't have near as many problems uh, with it tripping off on head pressure, which was something I had with the Avion. Got the pump down, it's got the uh, carrying strap here. The only thing I don't like about it, it's a little bit taller than the other one, but you can feel it kicking out the heat. The uh, purge factor, it's got that, the other one, uh, the Avion don't have, which kind of kind of comes in handy. If you want to make sure all your stuff's empty. We are just about there. We're just a couple pounds of pressure there, so we can go into purge, purge. It'll suck out whatever's left in the machine out of the condenser coils of it, and it'll pretty much just shoot it right over into the tank. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse this thing and suck it right back out of the tank and pump it into the machine. Right now, I've got everything zeroed on the scale, which I have to use my phone because I don't have my digital gauges up here. So what we're doing is just basically sucking it out of the tank, pumping it back through the machine, doing it off the liquid. I don't want to invert it because these tanks are known for not necessarily being the cleanest things in the world. You know, I don't, you know, unfortunately, it's just one of them things where I've filled the dryers before, whether it be this one here, just sucking it off the top, you know, the, you know, they come up about yay far off the bottom, I think it is. So they're gonna get mostly pure all liquid. Uh, you know, we're, we're already got four pounds. I mean, you do the math and what we're saving them far as that. As far as fractionation, stuff like that, usually isn't such a big deal with 404. It's obviously a blend of two different refrigerants, but otherwise we should be getting ready to go here in a minute. All right. Oh, Turn it on. You can see right there that the low water finally hit and so did the high water. We can go ahead and go upstairs up on the roof and uh, see if we can get this thing running. This section here is controlled at 110 volts, where the other section is separate to 230. So yeah, you can see what's going on here. Uh, temperatures, we're only six pounds into it. You can see already our liquid line temperatures are looking a little bit better, but we need to pump it in and get this thing up and going. So I've got the scale running in the background of the phone here and we're just about up to 200. Like I said, we only had six pounds in, we got six and a half to go. You can tell the Headmaster at 225 isn't gonna stop bypassing until that pressure gets up there. Right now it's hot, you do not wanna hold on to that. When we hit about right now, in probably another 10 pounds, it should start to close down and quit bypassing. Yeah, I can tell a change there. Yeah, the fan's running, but I can definitely tell there's a change there. Feeding in liquid, going into the receiver. Gotta like watch, you know, that we don't do too fast because you can have a lot more in there and it's not in the system yet because it's still boiling off in there. So you gotta kinda take your time a little bit on that. But like I said, we're weighing it in so we know that we're gonna be all right. Did get the uh, wire tie on the uh, low pressure switch there, that way it's not dangling around. We're running about 45 pounds suction here. That's equivalent to 11 degree evaporator plate. 
running 225 area for our head pressure. Uh, we've got it fully charged, just letting it uh, run through its first cycle here. Gonna get everything back together, go downstairs and watch it for a bit. It's uh, not too horribly dirty. And uh, if it starts making ice, we might be good. So did you get him a coffee or whatever? Looks to me like it must be making ice. It's working. Definitely cleaner than most of them I've ever seen. All right, they supposedly just cleaned it three months ago, four months ago. That's the first one I've seen where they had the star bit. All right, we're going off the Manitowoc book. Here is the 1400 series. Cut in pressure 275, cut out 225. That thing is set for 225. So there is your, your cycling range. For the smaller units, yeah, you're looking at 250 and open at 200. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that up to 275 with about a 50 pound differential. So let's go ahead and take that a little bit higher. I think the thought is let's get it all the way up there and then have it drop out where the head pressure control kits, kicks in. There we go, got it a trip. I'm more worried about what the pressure kit cuts in at. See, when you start playing games up and down with it, the uh, valve will start working differently. The valve will start reacting differently. So like right now, she's still staying, she's starting to get a little warm there, obviously. I don't know if I really like this, but that's what it said in even both books. I have a newer book from 2017 and an older one. They both said the same thing. Should cut in right about now. Boom, there we go. And see if it will get it to cut out on differential here. About right now, good deal. So 225, that's about where it's at. And unfortunately it didn't stay up there. I don't like that. 275, that just seems really stupid high. That's exactly where they're saying to do it at. Might go a little more differential, that way it stays running. What is our outdoor temperature today? Say 63. We go a little more differential on this thing. Yeah, we go a little more differential. That way the valve kind of kicks in and hopefully then holds it in there. Hopefully it'll stay. It's diving so fast. Yeah, I don't like that. I think that's kind of a crappy, a crappy setup. I mean, why are we cycling like that in this kind of weather? I mean, 63, yeah, I'm not too impressed. All right, so we blocked off the coil a little bit. It held fine in there at the 220-ish area. Right now it went into a harvest. You can see that our suction's up there around 87 pounds, which is pretty traditional, what I've seen most of the time. That's hanging in there around 150. And uh, we'll see how long it takes for it to cut out here uh, out of harvest. But uh, that extra temperature and stuff uh, definitely going to make a big difference on harvest times. Uh, but yeah, I think we pretty much got it. Got the uh, pressures marked on the inside there for the next guy. Also got them marked on top of the control. And then uh, I went ahead and decided to just go with my regular wire not wire ties there on that. There's no shake or vibration in here. So we're we'll, uh, going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Later.